Right, well, thank you so much. Um, I'm not going to lie, I am so excited to see people face to face. As I've been walking around, just getting to, to see people not on a Zoom, but actually in person is incredible. So thank you for being here. And hopefully towards the end of this pandemic, really do appreciate you spending time with Eastland Fairfield today. Um, and our continuous improvement planning meeting. Our agenda for today, you're gonna to hear from uh, Dr. Kimberly Peach Miller, our superintendent. Um, then we've got some report card measures that we're gonna go through for you. And at the very end, uh, this first part should take about an hour then we are gonna ask our adult workforce stakeholders to stay for a little bit longer. We've got a little bit more information that we need to share with them. So with that being said, it is my privilege to introduce Dr. Kimberly Peach Miller. Thank you. Um, I am very excited to be here for my first continuous improvement planning meeting as the superintendent and CEO of Eastland Fairfield Career and Technical Schools. I became the superintendent on January 1st of this year, um, taking over a, a school in the middle of a pandemic in the middle of the year is, is quite a challenge, but you know, um, we're always up for challenges. Uh, to tell you a little bit about myself, um, I am originally from Eastern Ohio. I grew up in East Liverpool, Ohio, a little blue collar town right on the Ohio River, and um, attended uh, university at Ohio State University, majored in English education and got my first teaching job in Cincinnati Public Schools, teaching English. From there, I taught in Southwest Local School District, a rural school district, and then a, in a suburban school district, Wyoming City Schools. Um, at that point, I, I decided I would uh, get my master's degree from the University of Cincinnati in administration, and I went on to become an assistant principal in an elementary school, and then a principal in a middle school, and then an assistant superintendent in Loveland City Schools, and then about seven years ago, I came to Columbus to be the Chief Academic Officer of Dublin City Schools. I was most recently the Superintendent of Bexley City Schools, an associate district with us. And now I'm thrilled to be here at Eastland Fairfield as the Superintendent. So that's a, a quick background about me. Um, I am really passionate about helping students find their path. Whether they are high school students or adult learners, I think that the work that we get to do here to connect students to skills and to interests that can lead to pathways is some of the most important work that anyone can do. And I want to thank you for your partnership in that work. Um, I just spoke with someone who hired one of our, our graduates, so we're, we're thrilled about that. And we appreciate your input, we appreciate your um, ideas in helping us to stay on the cutting edge. As we move forward at Eastland Fairfield, it is important that we are constantly growing and evolving and changing to meet the needs of, of our workforce, but also to meet the needs of our students in our region, and we're thrilled to be a part of that. As we move forward, in the next few months, we'll be doing some strategic planning to really develop a plan. We will invite many of you to be a part of that. Um, but we've started to really think about what is it we want to connect our students to? And again, I'm talking both high school and adult. And I am stealing um, part of this and adding to it from Hamilton Local Schools and Dr. Mark Tyler and his team over there. They have for years talked about connecting students to their E. What, what do they want to do after they graduate? Employment, enlistment, or enrollment in additional education? And that just made a lot of sense to us. And we started to talk about that here and we thought that's really our job is to help our students move on to what they want next. But we've added a fourth E, and we're adding entrepreneurship to that. And so one of the things we'll, you'll start to see from Eastland Fairfield is that we're working to connect students to their E. Whatever that, one of those four E's, and it could be multiples, um, we want to get students to that place, and we appreciate your help in doing so. Um, I'm going to turn it back over to Shelley Groves, our um, assistant superintendent, and once again, thank you for being here. Okay, I'm at the microphone. I can take this off now. Breathe for a minute. Stop sweating for a little bit. Well, I will give you a little bit of a heads up. I started my career as a math teacher here at Eastland Fairfield. Um, I get very excited when I'm talking about math or career and technical education. So I'm giving you a heads up now. I'm going to try to control my enthusiasm and bring it down a little bit so that way you all can actually understand what I'm trying to convey. Okay, so. We have a lot of exciting things taking place at Eastland Fairfield.
First off, you just met uh, number one on the list, our new superintendent, Dr. Kimberly Peach Miller. We are excited to add her to our team. Uh, as she said, she's got a lot of great plans. Um, and I'm hoping that if you have, uh, you've seen a little bit of a difference since January, there's been a lot of activity, I'm not gonna lie. I think she told us, fasten your seatbelt, here we go, and it was okay, 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 okay. So um, do appreciate um, her being here within our district. Some new programming that we have coming for this next school year, uh, cybersecurity at New Albany. Uh, we've been working with them, I will say for about a year or two now to get something going. We have incredible enrollment going on right now um, at New Albany, some wonderful opportunities with Franklin and looking at some other uh, college opportunities for our students to have um, as they take that program. Performing Arts, we are moving to the Encore campus in Reynoldsburg. Career Connections, we are adding two new Career Connections, middle school Career Connections courses um, at Reynoldsburg, and then one person will be shared between Bloom Carroll and Amanda Clear Creek, so we are excited to partner with those districts to offer some uh, career tech curriculum for their middle schoolers. And finally, in terms of new programming, and if, I'm, I'm probably gonna get a couple of shout outs, um, firefighting at Canal Winchester. We have been working on this for many, many, many a year. Um, so very excited to be able to offer this to our planning district. We're excited about that. As you pulled in, you probably saw maybe a little bit of activity going in the back of the lot. Our new building, the Engineering Technologies Building, uh, as with all construction projects, we're believing and crossing our fingers that it will be done August of this year and we're gonna have our students in those new programs. Um, I'm hoping, where's Jackie, that we'd be able to do some kind of tour for business partners and our associate school folks um, so you can come out and see the, the new building before we actually get our students in there and it, it, and it gets used, if you get my gist. Um, and finally, Perkins 5, um, for our business partners, I know you're thinking, well, this is a lot of uh, school funding. It is, but the new Perkins 5 uh, work-based learning component is directly related to our business partners. So we're just gonna talk a little bit about that at the end of this so that way um, I can give you all a heads up and, and I do have an ask for our business partners. So, who do we serve? Maybe, there we go. Um, and I'm just talking high school right now because a lot of times when you say Eastland Fairfield, most people, their mind grows directly to our high school uh, partnerships. These are all the school districts that we serve. And I, I, I giggled a little bit when Dr. I'm sorry, Dr. Miller, I'm gonna share this. When we came on, when she came on, she was looking at this and she said, okay, what are those the spades? What exactly are they? So I think I'm gonna to have to clean this up so that way everyone understands. Those are the Amanda Aces, okay? I'm gonna to have to clear up everyone's logo so that way I'm a little more succinct in my messaging. But yes, we've got a lot of our 16 school districts, our 16 partner schools, from the Aces and the Cruisers to the Rangers and the Rockets, go be you. Uh, we, all, we have a very unique and diverse school district population from their student body to their communities. They are very, very, very diverse. So when you talk about the students within those districts, we really work hard to serve our partner districts, communities, and business partners by providing services to all ages. From elementary to adult learners, we want to be the go-to for workforce development. Whether it's asking our elementary students or the younger learners, what do you want to be when you grow up? Or assisting an adult learner to trade up, upskill, we want to be that go-to for all things workforce development. I have to put a little tag in here because some people say, well, yeah, you're working with elementary students and you're pushing them towards career technical education. That is not the case. Know that even when we work with elementary or middle school students, our message is not just career and technical education. It truly is answering that question. What do you want to be when you grow up? And how can we help you get there? It may be career and technical education, or it may be the traditional educational route. Whatever it is, we want to be the bridge. Let us help your students get where they want to be. For our business partners and post-secondary partners, we want to prepare outstanding candidates, outstanding employees. We want our students, completers, and graduates to stand out from the rest. We want to provide a workforce that is technically and academically prepared to enter your workforce or school. As I said, we 
We serve 16 different schools districts, and the students within those schools, they are extremely diverse. I love this, this little saying. One thing we pride ourselves in here at Eastman Fairfield is our school diversity. I remember when I was at Fairfield, and, and Mr. Dick, I think he was down there with me uh, a little bit. I was at Fairfield, and I had a student from one of our Franklin County schools. She came up to me and she said, why are we taking time off for the fair, for a county fair? What in the world is that? And I had this conversation, well, we have students, they're in 4-H or they're in FFA, and they're gonna go and they're gonna show and sell their animals. <coughs> it blew her mind. She's like, are you being serious? Like people really do raise those cows and they're raising pigs at their house? Yes, yes they do. It, it, was, it, was, it was an eye-opening conversation for me to realize we do have students coming from Franklin County, Pickaway County, Fairfield County. They're bringing all kinds of different life experiences to Eastland Fairfield. So I love this quote, especially the first line. It says, diversity drives innovation. When Dr. Miller first came to Eastland Fairfield, the first thing she did was put a huge whiteboard in her office, one whole wall, and she's, she's always scribbling on that whiteboard. And she wrote on that whiteboard, she said, Eastland Fairfield is where innovative people come to work and to learn. And that has kind of stuck in my brain there since she's been here. She's often expressed how quick-paced career and technical education is. Because to be effective, we've got to be one step ahead of what's coming. We've got to be right in front of that train, driving it, pretty much. <clears throat> So I'm going to change what she wrote. Instead of saying Eastland Fairfield is where innovative people come to work and learn, I'm going to, sorry, Dr. I'm just going to say Eastland Fairfield is where innovative and diverse people come to work and to learn. This is my attempt at a graphic, okay? So I do apologize to the IT people out there. This is the Shelley Grove special, we'll call it. But that red dot on there, that is the, that is the area that Eastland Fairfield serves for high school students, okay? Where do we get our diversity? We serve high school students from at least three different counties, 16 different school districts, rural, urban, and suburban. Geographically, we cover 700 square miles. The reach and the impact of our adult workforce is even bigger than that. The high school, where we're restricted by the school districts. Adult workforce, they're, they're blowing it up even bigger. With this type of reach and the rapidly changing diversity in our region, Eastland Fairfield offers an amazing opportunity for students to meet, work with, learn with, and even learn from students who are different from them. Whether it be religion, race, gender, age, and even life experiences, we are very proud of the diversity we're able to share with our partner schools and students. Thank you to our associate schools for sharing your students your time, your expertise, as we look to better serve the students within our planning district. At this time, I'm gonna introduce Teresa Durkin, our Director of Public Relations and Student Services. She's gonna talk just a little bit about the opportunities that we're able to provide to our elementary students, elementary and middle school. I gotta take this off, otherwise I can't talk and breathe at the same time. <laughs> So, thanks, Shelley. Um, yeah, so what you're seeing up here, I kind of want to describe. As you know, you know, we obviously work with at the centers. We work with our 11th and 12th graders. But as Shelley said, um, our diversity, our equity, our inclusion does not begin when they arrive at our doorsteps as juniors. As shown on this slide, and I think that we, um, Dr. Miller and Shelley have alluded to this, our reach is much broader. Our reach is definitely from K to 12 and beyond. And that includes career awareness, career exploration, career planning, workforce development, and including our newest initiative, which is Level Up. And that works with soon-to-be graduates on training beyond high school and employment with our business partners. So the blue in this um, graphic here is representing awareness. Um, K all the way through sixth grade. Um, green is more exploration, and it kind of shows you the different activities that we're doing in those different grade levels, and red is planning. So these events and activities are developed not only for students, but also for parents, and then our CTPD district associates, the staff members that are belonging to those associate districts. 
So again, the underlying purpose, and I think you've already heard this, but our underlying purpose and goal for this broad outreach, K-12 to and beyond, is for uh, the students to have a broader understanding of their interests, their career interests, and to explore pathways. And not only with our programs, it's not all about us, but just to be able to explore and offer other different and uh, other workforce opportunities to students. So, um, yeah, that's why I wanted to kind of show you that the reach is broader than just being here on our centers. So at this time, I'm going to introduce Bo, Bo Stidham. He is our um, associate, uh, I'm sorry, our assistant um, at Fairfield Career Center. Thank you, Ms. Durkin. Good morning, everyone. Uh, once again, welcome. Uh, thank you for spending your time with us here this morning. Um, next, we're going to talk a little bit about um, just some re reporting measures, um, go through some data uh, with you there in your, in your packets um, that you received when you walk in. There's a little bit more deeper dive into this data, but I'm going to mention a few uh, key pieces of information here. So to begin, our CTPD, so our Career and Technical Planning District, that is a the districts that we serve, uh, those 16 districts that are comprised um, within our own over those three counties. So just to note, uh, it, it's tough for you to see up here on the screen, but the difference between the blue and the red, um, the blue represents the total CTPD, and that's demographic information um, that is uh, broken down by subgroup, as well as the red, represents enrollment in career and technical education, CTE. All right, so once again, blue is total number enrolled, and then red represents CTE. Uh, but, <laughs> students enrolled in CTE are not just physically on our campuses, they're on our campuses at our satellite programs, um, as well as any program, technical programs that are taken um, they're at home schools. Okay, so any, any student enrolled in career technical education. Uh, the thing that I think is important to note, um, if you kind of look at the comparison between the blue um, and then the red, students enrolled in CTE, um, it is a, it's a, a direct representation of the demographic subgroups amongst our planning district as a whole. All right, so we, we are serving students um, that are very much comprised within the total planning district themselves, um, which I think is important to note. Oh. Our four-year graduation rate, um, as you can see over the last five years, um, strong. The last uh, two years specifically, 99% uh, and 98%. Um, as always, there's always room for improvement um, as we strive to, to reach 100% every year. Um, so we're not far off of that mark. Um, but nonetheless, uh, strong numbers over the past five years consecutively. And then, um, just a, dim a different visual uh, for demographic subgroups of that uh, CTE concentrators who have graduated within the last four years. Um, now, to clarify a CTE concentrator, um, just very brief is any student who has completed two courses within the same program pathway. All right, so any student who has completed two courses within the same program pathway is defined as a CTE concentrator. And once again, this specific data is broken down a little bit further in those couple packets that you have. Five-year graduation rate, once again, strong percentages over the last five, uh, five consecutive years, um, the last couple of 98.2%. Um, a difference between four and five year, uh, four year graduation rate, for instance, when you see 1920, that um, consists of students who have graduated in the class of 2019. The five year graduation rate are students who have graduated for the class of 2018, but finished their diploma at the summer of 2019. So we're using that summer 2019 as that benchmark um, to, to classify uh, those percentage numbers. 
And then once again, um, various uh, demographic subgroups between those CT concentrators who have graduated within uh, the last five years, once again, the class of 2018. And at this time, it is my pleasure to introduce Ms. Jackie Couple, the director of Eastern Career Center. <laughs> Thank you, Bill. Good morning, and I'm so glad that you're here um, with us at Eastline, and I get to be, I have the privilege of being the director in this building. I'm also glad that you found our building. We're realizing as the year goes on how difficult our signage is, so I'm glad you made it back here. So, all right, um, I'm going to talk a little bit about technical skill attainment, and in the packet that you were given on the very last page, there's a wonderful graphic that goes along with what I'm speaking about. Uh, technical skill attainment is uh, measuring, um, has a number of part, parts to it, but it is looking at the students who participated in taking our technical assessments. And our technical assessments currently that we use are called the web exam. So those of you from other schools may know that as your end of course exams in your academic courses. Well, um, the web exam is the end of course exams in career technical. There are some programs that also get to use their industry credential exam, such as the Cosmetology State Board Industry Credential is used in this um, um, scoring as well. What they do is they take the number of students who are participating uh, and then the number of students who pass their technical assessments and we get our percentage. So if you look at the, at the back page there, you can, it has a breakdown. If it says SAT, that is our satellites out in the other districts that were spoken about. ECC, which is Eastland, Fairfield is the FCC, then our grand total, where it says affiliate, that is all of our associate districts, our 16 districts that make up our CTPD, and then we have our grade average that we have there. We're working really hard to make sure that we are aligning curriculum, both in our own buildings as well as in the 16 districts, because aligning the curriculum um, with the state standards will then align with our technical skill assessments. The other piece that's changing in technical skill assessments, currently they are just computer-based tests, multiple choice, but many of the programs are also moving to a performance-based assessment, which will probably be a better gauge of how well students are doing in a career technical program because most of our programs are very hands-on. So we are, the state is in the process of changing some of those over as we speak. We know that culinary is baking and pastry is moving over soon, as well as welding. So these are changes that are taking place at the same time. But at this time, that test was a, a multiple choice test, as we see there, and you can look at the results. If we do a breakdown of our students who are testing, um, and across the CTPD and their passage just kind of gives you a percentage of where we're at. When we're looking at each breakout of each group and their diversity, we range from about a 20% um, differential between our students with disabilities at 60% or just shy of 60% and um, females at the top with at 80%. So you can see the breakout um, in that area as well. We call this our follow-up data, our post-program outcomes. The, one of the good things that's always happened in career tech for as long as I've been in career tech is that we have to follow up with what our graduates are doing. It's not like we just finish the year and say, hey, 60% you know, are headed to the university. We actually have to follow up with them with a six-month report of what they're doing. And that really is one of the most important things because as what we talked about earlier with Dr. Miller spoke about is the four E's. This is the four E's. This is where we get to measure whether they are going on with enrollment, employment, entrepreneurship, or enlistment. And that's what we gather from our, our students, there are graduates, six months out to find out what there is going on. And as you can see across our CPD, um, we are doing great things. And they are entering into those areas and they're not sitting <laughs> home. They're actually out working, going to school, at working, uh, in the military, 
who are starting their own business. I'm amazed at how many young people are out there already starting their own business at an early age. So this kind of gives you that picture of where we are, which is fabulous. We keep increasing that with our post-program placement. And this gives you our data on um, where they're at and each of the subgroups that we look at demographically. Again, there is um, a little bit of a, a break between our um, English learners and our black non-Hispanics, but as you can see, they are all above 60%. Um, we are all moving forward in the right direction. So we work really hard to make sure that students are meeting that match because it's important for us. Those four E's is, as Dr. Miller said, we are really working hard because we always are not talking about graduation as the final, no. What's the next step? What's your next chapter? You're opening the next place and how can we help you get there? And that's part of our job that we love to do each and every day with the students that attend in career technical education. All right, now back to um, Shelly Gross. So are you feeling the excitement about data? Because I'm feeling it. As a math teacher, as I said, I love, there's two other people that I know are loving this data right now, and that's gonna be our treasurer who's setting up here, and then our EMAS coordinator. They are on, they're ooh, anticipating our next steps. So, um, again, why, why, why do we wanna share this with, with our stakeholders? Because we're accountable for what's taking place at Eastland Fairfield. We want to be very transparent as to what's happening in terms of where our students are going. Are we being successful serving our students and making sure that they are in one of those four E pathways? Are we setting those students up for success? So that's why we have invited you. We want you to know what's going on and we want your input as to how we can make this a better place, as how our students can become more successful, if you will. So with that being said, I know Jackie had already mentioned um, a little bit of this, um, so I'm not going to dwell, I'm not going to stay here a, a long time. But the 2020 report card data and information has been pro provided to you in a packet. Um, I want to draw your attention to just a couple of things. Again, I know Jackie mentioned it, but I'm just going to touch on it for a second. The technical skills participation. Technical skills, as she said, these are the end of course exams. So the Algebra 1 exam that they would take after taking an Algebra 1 course, if they're taking the only one I'm thinking of is the automotive brake steering and suspension because we're having issues with that course right now. This is the test. They would take the brakes, suspension, and steering at the end of that course. Okay, so it's their end of course assessments. Um, we've had these for about five to seven years. This data measures the number of program concentrators compared to how many of those concentrators actually took the corresponding web exam. Now, not it has been out there in the state of Ohio, so I'm going to explain why we have this measure. There have been uh, some programs where maybe, let's say you had 50 students enrolled in a program. ODE has stated, then you have to test all 50 students in that program. Uh, so that's why they, put, they wanna make sure that if they're in career and technical education and they are in a program that you are testing all of those students. Again, it's that piece of accountability. If they're in there, you're testing them and how successful are you with those students. So that's the participation rate. Then we actually have the attainment rate. Of the students you did test, how did they do on that assessment? Okay, those two measures together help us define one of the buckets that make up a program compliance. Okay, did you test everybody you were supposed to test? And of those you did test, how do they do on the assessment? The other, again, Jackie, you stole my thunder. The other that Jackie also mentioned was our post-program placement. Where are they when they're leaving Eastland Fairfield? Now again, these measures not only apply, I call it Eastland Fairfield and our satellites, Eastland Fairfield proper, but every program within our planning district, all of our partner schools, this data, they're still required to report and track as well. We have met, and I, I'm gonna send a shout out to, my, to Michelle Dilley, our Amos person. Um, we have been meeting with our associate schools 
walking them through data, walking them through what does it mean and what do we actually need to be collecting. Um, so our goal over the next couple of years is to, we really do want to lead. If we're the lead of the planning district, then we need to help, we need to assist, we need to make sure that everyone understands what the expectations are, how do you do this appropriately, and that accountability piece. You know what, we don't need to worry about that one. Jackie already did a great job of explaining that. So we'll go on to, as I said, Perkins 5. Oh, if you're in education, career technical education, you love Perkins 5, okay? It is changing in the funding model for career and technical education. Anytime there's a change in funding, there is a change in accountability and, and how you need to track and data you need to keep and what you need to record. Well, one major change that they have is in their work-based learning, okay? As I said just a second ago, one of the buckets for a program to be compliant is that technical skill attainment. Are you testing who you're supposed to test and how are they doing on that test? That's one bucket for program compliance. And this is every program, so bear with me just a second, business partners, I'll get through what I promise. There are three buckets. The testing, technical skill attainment, post-program placement, where are they when they leave us? Are we actually doing something? Are they doing something productive? Are we creating productive citizens? And that third bucket, the new bucket, that has come with Perkins 5 is work-based learning. Now, this is not an option. This is not elective. This is a requirement for that career and technical education funding, okay? So what they did, they took work-based learning and think, think of work-based learning as a huge umbrella, okay? Big umbrella. And there's six little spokes underneath it, okay? Job site placement, school-based enterprise, entrepreneurship, simulated work environment, remote or virtual, and apprenticeship and pre-apprenticeships. Students can participate in any, any mix and match of those six, and it falls under this work-based learning definition. So how did they implement work-based learning as to compliance for a program? Well, a, a little bit, I, I copied this from ODE. It says, beginning as early as ninth grade, as grade nine, Students should accumulate 250 hours of work-based learning aligned to their programs of study. That is the expectation. The benchmark for each and every program, and it will eventually it will cap at 15%, but right now it is at 13%. So what does that mean? The expectation from the Ohio Department of Education is that 13% of each career and technical program will complete 250 hours of work-based learning experiences aligned to their program of study. So what does that mean? That means 13% of our students enrolled in our automotive program have to complete 250 hours of work-based learning experiences. Any mix and match of those six things that we just described. Our pre-nursing students, 13% of those pre-nursing students have to log 250 hours of work-based learning. Here's the fun one. Our IT students, 13% of our IT students must log 250 hours or more of work-based learning experience. So with that said, this is new, and we are working with each of our programs to develop plans and create opportunities for each, for each student and each program. For some programs, it's pretty easy. Cosmetology, as they're able to get out and earn their that's going to be an easy 250 hours for those juniors and seniors to earn, okay? IT is going to be a little trickier. IT is a little harder for them to get, get into, uh, do some shadowing experiences, some internships. That's a little difficult. So we're working with our, our instructors, trying to find ways and programs that we can help uh, our students earn these 250 hours. With that said, as a partner, I'm putting on my charming little smile. As a partner of Eastland Fairfield, I will ask that if you are interested in receiving more information as to how you can help one of our programs with placing students, please reach out to Christine Boucher. Christine, I just threw you under the bus. Christine Boucher, she's our business, partner, business partnership coordinator. Um, and we'll get you connected, okay? If you're saying, hey, I would really love to have some students in, uh, we've got some projects that we really need some assistance with, Give us a call. We'll, we'll hook up some students with you.
okay? So, we've talked a lot about our high school students. And I told you high school has this, it has a pretty big reach for a, for a secondary um, institution. So right now I'm gonna introduce Angela Ward, our adult director um, for adult workforce development. We're gonna, we're gonna bust those boundaries a little bit for you and talk about the opportunities available to our adult learners. Oh, wait, this was my halfway through joke. <laughs> Don't worry, we only have 360, what? Oh, 396 slides, so we're done. We're way under his number, okay, so we're good to go. All right, sorry, that was poorly done. I should have waited on that one. All right, Angela. Thanks, Shelly, and good morning. And I am also glad to see faces. It's been a long time, so um, we appreciate you taking the time to uh, share with us this morning. So, adult, um, there are some exciting things going on um, in adult, as well as opportunities for adults. So new programming, um, we're looking at an STNA and phlebotomy program, um, both located at the Fairfield Career Center, and they will probably start mid-summer, um, early fall. So we are in the process of getting those um, wrapped up and hopefully can begin those programs um, mid-summer. Uh, then we also are looking at a facility maintenance program we did have a maintenance program uh, earlier on, and for some reason, we ran it for about, I guess, maybe two years, two to three years. Um, didn't continue to receive the enrollment, so we decided, you know what, let's take a pause, let's reconnect with our business partners, and um, so we are going to also try to have that facility maintenance program up and running by the fall of this year also. Um, on the horizon, and, but not necessarily on the list, um, there is some conversation that we're having about looking at electrical and plumbing. Um, those are not going to quite be ready for the fall, but maybe by the first of the year, uh, we will need to reconvene with the business partners and actually see which direction that we might uh, want to go, because there's even, even some conversation about some apprenticeship so those things are really exciting um, on the adult side in terms of new programming. The customized training is not new. However, it's new from the standpoint that we now have a facility that um, we are very, very excited about. And if you have not had an opportunity to visit our facility for the customized training, I invite you to do so because um, we're really excited about it. Um, some great opportunities in that facility. So again, if you haven't seen it and you're interested in seeing it, uh, just contact me or Todd and we'll be glad to set that up and um, let you have some fun over in that customized training um, center. But also when we talk about customized training, um, I'll just say to the business partners, Please work directly with us, with the Adult Workforce Division, so that we can design and tailor a training program that meets your needs and specific to what you need. Um, just give us a call and we can pretty much be uh, ready to uh, move a program forward in a very short period of time. So if you're not um, familiar with the customized training aspect, please connect with us because it gives you an opportunity to um, upskill your current workers. And if you have potential employers that, employees um, that you would like to have some training done, we can also connect with you and start that process for um, your current employees as well as your potential employees. I'm not sure if you are um, aware of tech cred, some of you may, but I would really like to um, invite you to take a look at tech cred. It's an opportunity um, that's been around for a couple of years now um, where you can take advantage of upskilling, again, your current employees as well as potential employees and then get reimbursed. 
So, um, and you can be reimbursed up to $2,000 for each um, credential that that individual receives. So please, it's an opportunity, and I know, you know, money can be tight, but again, we're trying to help be a part of the solution in upskilling the workforce in Ohio. So here's an opportunity that you, you know, spend a little money on the front end, but the long-term um, gains on it will be great for your company and we can help you with that. So if you're interested, connect with us and we can help you through the application process. Um, they have streamlined that process since, in, since it initially started and it's really not that cumbersome. It's pretty easy um, to take advantage of that. So I would um, like to offer that to you as well, if you're looking for any opportunities to retool or upskill your current and potential workforce. So, um, we just actually went through uh, reaccreditation on the adult side. Back in June of 2014, uh, the Adult Workforce Division transitioned um, from North Central accreditation, and now we are accredited through uh, Council on Occupational Education. So our reaffirmation visit, and I shared this with JB this morning, because he was here for the initial um, accreditation visit. But um, the week of March 22nd through the 26th was uh, our reaffirmation uh, visit. Went extremely well. So we are now in the process of uh, writing a report to a couple of things that they found that I'm, I told Kim, I'm hopeful that those findings are going to turn to zero because the information was available. I'm not sure what they looked at, but we were given the information again. But one of the components of the uh, accreditation process is that you must maintain a three to five year strategic plan. So what you see is on the adult side, um, just our thought processes and our strategic planning and we go through those six goals um, as we think about how we look at programming, what program we're providing, how does it fit in the scheme of what the local business and industries are needs and as well as program needs um, for the adult division. So I think you heard um, Dr. Miller say this morning that the district is actually getting ready to uh, look at a, a, a strategic plan um, for the district. So I will be working closely with her to see how, in fact, the adult strategic plan fits into the district plan. So we're almost to the end of this one. I think 22 is the end of the current strategic plan that I have. So the timing is perfect that we'll be able to um, look at the adult strategic, strategic plan in terms of how it fits in with the district plan so that it's a seamless process and the accountability uh, for the district is the same accountability that I will have to do for uh, adult ed in terms of the accreditation. So I just wanted to show you um, how we think and why we think and what we do. So also a part of the accreditation is the annual report. So every December we are required to uh, complete an annual report. So when we, initial started, when we initially started this process, um, I was kind of charged with picking the years to determine where we should start uh, looking at data. So um, now that we're in year six, um, we're now at 2018-19. So when I picked the years, it was determined on I wanted to make sure that we would get the best uh, results in terms of student uh, completion placement and licensure um, that we could get. So COE, which is Council on Occupational Education, 
allowed me to select the years, but once you select your years, you had to stay with that. It wasn't like one year you could choose and then, oh, that didn't work out, you could go to something else. So I strategically tried to figure out what would give us the best results. And thus far, I did pick the right ones because we have been able, I think we had one year um, that we had to do a performance plan. But what COE requires is that you have 60% 60, 60 completion, 70% placement and 70 cent uh, percent licensure. The only licensure program that we have at Eastern Fairfield is our police program. So as you can see, and I'm not gonna go through the chart because you can see that, but as you can see, we fare um, pretty well in terms of meeting those uh, performance measures. As I think both said, there's always room for improvement and we would, we would like all of those columns to be 100. So that's our goal is to get to 100, but we are for sure uh, in a good place with our numbers in terms of the annual report. Um, so why is the annual report and what does the annual report do? Um, if, again, it's a requirement uh, for COE. All accredited institutions um, must show that they are complying with the standards and the criteria and the conditions of accreditation. And I know Todd is probably sitting there going, I don't even want to hear those words right now after we've just gone through. Um, this was Todd's first experience going through the accreditation. Um, but again, as I said, we figured well. But the other part of the annual report it just keeps us transparent and also gives us an opportunity um, to look at information by program. Um, because when, as Shelly was talking about the Perkins, program, Perkins performance measures, when we get those performance measures on the adult side, it is looking at those measures institutionally. So when I get my results from the Council on Occupational Education, I'm able to get it down to the program level, which Perkins doesn't necessarily give me that. So it's a very good tool to just um, use with staff and as uh, we get new employees in, you get an actual picture of where we actually stand in terms of uh, completion, placement, and licensure for all of the adult programs. So what programs do we currently have? This is a list. If you're not familiar with ASPIRE, ASPIRE was initially the ABLE program. So it's GED, ESOL, and then we have the Basic Police Officer Training Program that's housed here at Eastland, um, the Dental Assisting Program at Fairfield, HVAC Program here at Eastland, Medical Assisting at Fairfield, um, network and cyber security is at the district office and welding here at Eastland. And so the facilities program will be housed um, here and it will also keep the medical programs down at the Fairfield Progressive. So again, back to Perkins. Uh, for 1920 on the adult side, there was not any um, data available, so I just thought I would show you where we were up to this year, but there is no data for this year. Um, what we found um, when we did the uh, local needs assessment, and we'll get a little bit more into that in the breakout section, was that um, we really did, we were required to do the needs assessment, but we clearly didn't need the needs assessments to tell us what we already knew. And one of the things that um, we are focusing on now is just the whole non-traditional equity pieces in terms of who we serve. Uh, so we're looking at some strategies and things to put those uh, strategies in place to see if we can't become a little more diverse, a little more well-rounded in terms of non-traditional 
um, students. And so what non-traditional recognizes is those individuals in a career pathway uh, less than 25% uh, represented by gender. So if it's a female in the HVAC program, or if it's a male in the dental assisting or medical assisting program. So we're working on that because um, that is clearly what the data showed. However, um, we knew that anyway. Um, but you know, it's always nice to go through the exercise to confirm what you think you already know, but then when it's on the paper, you're like, okay, yeah, well, we need to do something about that. Um, so at this point, I think I'm turning it back over to Shelly. Thank you again. Well, let me just tell you, we are ahead of schedule. I'm, I'm pretty pumped. I like to be very aware of your time. Um, so let me, let me just state again how thankful we are, how appreciative we are of you spending a little bit of time this morning um, allowing us to be very transparent as to Eastland Fairfield, how we're doing, and where we are moving. Um, I believe Dr. Miller mentioned uh, when she greeted you all this morning, we will be going through a strategic planning process. So don't be surprised if you see a reach out from, from uh, Dr. Miller or myself requesting some input. Um, we want an exceptional plan because we want to have exceptional outcomes for our students. Um, whether they be high school, high school or adult students, um, we want them to be successful. So you'll probably be seeing a little bit of information about our strategic planning initiative coming up. Um, second thing, if you notice a lot this year, uh, not just this year, but historically, we have focused a lot on uh, our student body, those that we serve in the diversity within our population. Uh, I will be sending out a survey. I want to give you a little bit of time, if you are able, just to look through some of that data. If there's something that really stands out to you, I want to give you an opportunity to convey to Eastland Fairfield. Um, what did you see or what did you hear and how can we make it better? So you will be getting a, a little Google uh, thing. Ryan, sorry, I don't know the official word, but you'll be getting a little Google thing uh, form from Eastland Fairfield from me asking for a little bit of input. Um, if there was anything, again, outstanding that you saw that we can help our students be just maybe a little bit more successful. Uh, before we leave, I do want to again send a shout out to our interactive media students. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Appreciate your talent and sharing them with us. Um, and at this time, if you are a high school stakeholder, um, you are dismissed. And again, I want to thank you for, your, for being here. If you are an adult workforce stakeholder, there is a little bit more information that uh, Angela needs to share with you. And we will reconvene at about 9.35. In, in the Heritage Room. We will walk you down there so you know where you're going. Again, thank you for your time. I hope you have